Okay, I think I'm ready to try again. First off, I think it's important to introduce the PC that I'm going to be liquid cooling. And here it is in all its majesty. The parts that I'm going to be using is an X370 Strix gaming motherboard, a 1700X Ryzen CPU, a GTX 1080 by Palette, which I'm also going to be liquid cooling. Storage wise, I'm going to be using a 500 gig 960 Evo and 16 gig of Dom Platts. I'm going to be using an RM850X from Corsair and a bunch of liquid cooling goodies. And now it's time to install the GPU block on the GPU. Hugely terrifying because I've never done it before, but hopefully it doesn't go too badly. And just like that, the warranty on my graphics card is void. So let's take the cooler off and see what happens. And here we have the naked GPU. And as you can see, it's a thing of absolute beauty. With this huge cooler attached, it normally does quite well with temperatures, but liquid cooling it is always better. So I have somehow, in the process of installing the actual GPU block, lost the, the thermal pads and stuff for the back plate. It's somewhere on the table, but I, I mean, it's obviously really messy, but I, I can't, I, I don't know what I did with it. And here is a quick look at the installed GPU block. What a sexy thing it is. And especially from the back, it just looks amazing. I was a bit bummed that I had to use an EK back plate, but I think it looks amazing in the end. And here's the obligatory peel shot. And then the also very important reflectiveness of the contact plate. Well, what a nice fit. And this is what the block looked like installed. I think it looks pretty great, to be honest. So you know how they say you get thermal paste absolutely everywhere. <laughs> I've somehow managed to get thermal paste on the wall somehow. So this is a bit of a progress report. As you can see, I've, um, I've got the CPU cooler or just the CPU block on. Um, I think the colors work really well there. The black with that kind of like pinkish gray almost i don't really know what to call it anyway so the blocks on the gpu block over here hanging slightly precariously is on with its back plate um that took me really long to do because i was super terrified the whole time doing it the same with the with the uh, cpu block over here and it's going to be a bit dark um oh there's a hint of what's coming but i've got one of the radiators I've got the fans on and I've got it on the bracket so far and here I've got the case set up so that I can start putting stuff in. So before all of you point out that I can actually use a 360mm radiator in the front, the reason that I used a 240 instead is so that I still have access to the hard drives and I think two 240mm radiators is more than enough. Uh, this is how far I've gotten. I've made quite a bit of progress I think. I've gotten the GPU block on, the CPU block on, I've got the radiators installed. I've pretty much got everything in place. Um, everything is where it needs to be. Uh, I just had a couple of issues. First of all, the screws that kind of I used to connect the fans to the radiator over here were a bit too short, so that became like a hellish nightmare of an experience because it would make these like weird creaking noises when I was busy screwing it down, like finding the little bit of um, of thread that was available and I didn't know if that was the radiator being punctured or just the case creaking to like have there um, be enough kind of like thread in for it to stay in place. So I don't really know what happened there. Hopefully it's still okay. So how I'm thinking of running it is this, I'm going to connect the two here. Now this is the out port of the pump. 
So I'm gonna send it from here to here. So I'm gonna run it kind of like, like that. And then I'm gonna come up, back, up, and then I've got just this to catch any water that might come out. Um, so this is gonna go up, back, up, back like this. This is gonna go like that into here. This is gonna come out, go like this, like that, and then up there. So that's kind of how the loop's gonna run. So from the pump to the graphics card, from the graphics card to the radiator, from the radiator to the CPU, from the CPU back to the radiator up here. Okay, so this is the first bit to camera that I've done since I've restarted the build. Excuse the bathrobe, but it's, I just woke up and it's comfortable. Uh, so let's have a look here. Um, I actually don't think it's a light on. There we go. So, <clears throat> over here we can see I've done two of the bends with PTEG and the lighting's not very great, but I don't want you to have a great look at it because I'm going to unveil it later. But so I decided to keep that kind of offset bend thing f to the graphics card because I think it looks pretty cool. And then up here is the bend that it's not an offset anymore. I'm using it as it's kind of like almost a 90 and then like a 90. And yeah, I think it looks I think it looks pretty good. It's kind of lined up with the CPU quite well so that that pipe is going to be pretty level to that. Uh, but yeah, so I've kind of wiped off the defeat of the copper piping. Uh, which I'm kind of now thinking the copper pipe was too was too wide, even though it is 12 millimeter piping. The thing is that it doesn't it didn't fit into the fitting nearly as well as this PTEG does. PTG, I keep saying that wrong. Um, so yeah, I think that might have had something to do with it. I think it wasn't quite milled to the same kind of diameter as the the fittings are designed for, and I think that was the biggest issue. Uh, when it comes to like waterproofness and stuff. Okay, so I might have made a little bit of a mistake here because as you can see the silicone insert is kind of been running all the way through this seriously complicated bend and now I I can't I can't get it out <laughs> because I didn't move it along with over the course of the five bends that I did and now now I can't get it out. I mean, I'm twisting it and doing all kinds of weird maneuvers with it, but I just can't get it out. And I'm really scared that it like snaps and then there's just like, like silicone insert in the tube. Yay, I freed it. I have to admit some poo came out there. So this is probably the most infuriating thing <laughs> or just the most annoying thing that's happened to me in a while. So this is the amount that I cut off the end, right? Because when eyeing it from outside to line it up, that's kind of what it looked like. Like this is where it was going to make contact. Um, and I was really trying to get that kind of insert out. So I cut this off pretty hastily and well, I cut like that much too off to th that much too much off and this whole run of wait where are we one two three four five bends that took me an hour to do is perfect i did it all by eye perfectly lines up everything would have been amazing i would have been so happy all the bends look really great and now it's that much too short. It lines up perfectly. It literally sits right in front of the, the thing, right in front of the fitting. But it's just, just that little bit too short and it was perfect. Everything was fine. I actually think I'm done. I'm gonna try fill it and, and see what happens. Uh, as you can see here, wait, where do I have it? I, uh, ah, I have it over here. Oh, I cut my fill pipe much shorter, so that's not going to have that terrible effect again. Okay, so this is actually a fairly exciting bit, uh, because I have to make the actual color that I want. Now, because in Japan it's quite difficult to get hold of pretty much any color, I initially wanted to make it white, wanted to be boring about it, but I couldn't find any white because it's such an overused color. Um, and pretty much the only colors that they had available um, are these EK cryofuel colors that they have here. And 
Ugh, the blue isn't that nice. Well, it's quite nice, but it's not really the color that I wanted. I don't want red. I don't want any of the colors really that they have available because they have a very limited selection with these EK cryophiles. So then what I decided to do is why don't I just mix them and make a color that is more suited to me. So I decided to go with purple because that's quite an easy color to make. So I've got about a liter of distilled water here. And then I've got the two, I've got a blue and a red. Um, so I'm going to use, because it's th these are designed for a liter each, I'm going to try and use about half of each color. So I'm going to start with the, it's start with blue and then see how it goes from there. So shake it up nice and well, open it up, which is apparently easier said than done. Oh, there we go. That's a very blue blue. It's like a baby blue blue. So that feels like it's about half. Um, and that's actually not too, too bad a color. It's a very deep blue. Uh, yeah, you can come and look. I'm busy filming, but you're more than welcome to come have a look. Um, so that's quite clear now, but it's because I only have about half the bottle in. So now I'm going to add the red and see what that does. So I still have quite a bit left in the bottle. So I can kind of mix and match until it's more or less a color that I want it to be. Ooh, that's gone really dark. And it's actually still... You know, it's pretty purple. It's pretty, pretty purple, yeah. It's just really, really dark. Like on camera, you can barely tell that it's purple. Um, I think the red's really dark. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the color that it is. Um, yeah, I think it looks really nice. It's again quite difficult to pick up on camera, but yeah, no, it's closer. There we go. And again, the light makes it quite difficult to see. But yeah, I think that's, <laughs> I think that's right. And now it's time to fill it. And with that, it brings me to the end of my build video that was way more of a success than the previous build video. And I'm actually really excited about the PC. Uh, I'm going to unveil it next week. And, well, spoiler alert, it looks awesome. Um, and it works this time. I know it works because I edited this video on it. If you don't want to miss that, uh, that unveiling video, do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already because, well, it really is worth it. I'm super chuffed with how well it came out. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.